I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Uh, no problem at all. Happy to do it. So let's just dive right in. Um, <laughs> I'm curious, you know, as succinctly as possible, could you try explaining to me how you see the world? Sure. Sure. Uh, the short version, if you're looking for like a, a sound bite or a paper bite, would be we are living in a vast, very vast version of the Truman Show. Uh, that it's not a sphere, but it instead is a giant circular disc, which is covered by a dome. Again, much like the show itself. And what that dome is sitting on, so you could basically say we're in a, a planetarium, a terrarium, a snow globe, an amusement park ride, whatever you want to call it. Now, what that snow globe is sitting on, no idea. You know, try to live one world at a time. And, you know, could it be that this flat studio, Hollywood backlot, is sitting on top of a giant sphere? Yeah, possibly. But that's where I, what I see the world as right now. Gotcha, gotcha. And when did you start believing in, in you know, holding this view? Two years ago when I was, uh, I was in Boulder, Colorado, and I was doing some contract work for software companies. And I'd always been into conspiracies. And I looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, you know, some I liked, some I didn't like. And everyone that's in the conspiracy world, well, actually, regardless whether you're in conspiracy world or not, you know what this is. Everyone's heard of the flat earth and everybody hates it. It's the last book on the shelf. It's the DVD, you know, given to you for Christmas that you're never gonna watch. And I just happened to glance by one of these on YouTube back in, well, 2014, summer of 2014. And it was intriguing because with the, the first one I saw, and there was not a lot out there in, in 2014. Uh, the first one I saw was by a German guy. And he was talking about how the flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere don't make any sense. He goes, he goes, he goes, he, he, he done a lot of work down the Southern Hemisphere. And he said that when you're going from anywhere below the equator to somewhere else below the equator, like South America to Africa or Africa to Australia, or take your pick. He goes, the routes are all over the place. He goes, and there's almost no nonstops. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of flights a day, but there's only like, there's like a handful of nonstops uh, from, from anywhere. I mean, total. And he goes, all the, the connections always go north. They go far, far north, way out of their way, and then come back down. And he goes, none of this makes sense unless you're looking at it from a flat map, you know, the old uh, azimuthal equidistant map. And so I go, okay, that's, that's interesting. Sure, why, why not? You know, it's, 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 it's interesting, but I didn't think it was real. And so then I started digging into it and ran into another guy who said he was a, a contract painter for, for NASA back in the day and that he was at some meeting and somebody told him or was talking to some other guys and, and they said that, yeah, GPS, the, you know, the global positioning system doesn't work in Antarctica because it's flat and nothing works out there. And so I'll go, okay, this is, you know, I, 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 I'm picking up, I'm picking this up. I'm going, okay, this is good. So I spent, I thought, okay, maybe I can disprove this. Like anybody in the flat earth community, we all start the same way, which is okay, we'll disprove it. And I worked on this thing. I thought I could knock it out in a weekend. And there I was nine months later, staring at my computer, realizing I couldn't prove the globe anymore without, uh, you know, without some uh, large amounts of reasonable doubt to the point where I said, okay, I remember it was February 10th, 2015. I'm sitting up in, in Boulder and I said, okay, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of videos. I'll start out small. And I didn't know anything about making videos at all, you know, used a, a Windows Live Movie Maker, a free program and narrated my own stuff and, and wrote my own stuff. And I basically wrote a series of clues. I called them flat earth clues. And I put them out on YouTube and said, okay, prove me wrong. Basically, just throw it out there. Somebody in the academic world, shoot this thing down. And that's how it started. And I thought, for, you know, it was one of those things where I was pretty sure I, had, I hadn't missed anything, but you've got that nagging doubt in the back of your head, kind of like when you turn in a paper, you're pretty sure you've aced it, but you, you got this nagging doubt. And I thought for sure somebody was gonna call me up and say, okay, Here's where you made the mistake and quote me some math thing. Oh, you forgot to carry the two here and shoot it down. You can shut down your YouTube page. But instead, the opposite happened. People started calling me 
almost immediately. You know, I put my phone number out there, and I don't know how you got it, but you know, maybe you got the same <laughs> same way everybody else did. Because I honestly thought I was going to be shot down, so I thought, you know, oh, I'll just put my email address, my phone number, make it for easy for people to get a hold of me. And then the phone calls started coming almost immediately where people wanted to talk to me, to interview me about this stuff. And I was going, okay. And then between those, I started getting calls from subject matter experts, you know, people out there that dealt with a lot of curvature instruments like military, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, structural engineers, pilots, uh, air traffic controllers, people that dealt with a lot of planes, um, shipping expert. A uh, travel agent, international travel agent who, who specialized in the Southern Hemisphere. All these people were calling me and I was offered a, a, a little radio show, a, a podcast on a, on a sort of a conspiracy network. And I said, OK, and I took that. And so people were coming on either anonymously or not anonymously and, and doing shows with me. I didn't have to call anybody. I mean, none of this was solicited. And then a publisher out, out of uh, London called me and said, hey, we'd like to turn your clues into a book. And I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever that means. It's like, because you've you know, I, you've heard stories about scams before. It's like people will call you up. And I go, okay. And then next thing you know, I get a, uh, a FedEx in the mail and there's a whole bunch of copies of this book. And she goes, oh yeah, by the way, it's on Amazon. And I go, okay. She, and she's a believer. And then I had a, a producer out of New York called me and say, um, yeah, by the way, is your passport updated? And I go, why? She goes, well, because you're going to have to put whatever stuff you have, you're going to have to put it in storage. You're going to have to move. And I go, why? She goes, because people are going to be calling you. I, she goes, I, regardless of if my deal falls through with you or not, which it did. Uh, she goes, there's going to be people calling you. This is going to turn into something. She goes, the numbers are just, you know, there's, it's generating too much of a buzz. Meaning whether you like it or you hate it, you can't ignore it is, is what she, there was, that was, I thought that was pretty appropriate. So I, uh, I moved from Boulder not that long ago and, uh, came, my family's from Seattle. So I, I throw all my stuff up here. And then in the meantime, this thing just started growing and growing. And I imagine you have other questions. I'm kind of going off the, the out into the weeds on this one so, <laughs> so sorry that that's kind of my little my little rant so no no worry i appreciate that there's, yeah there's a lot in there that i have questions about sure um so is this your your full-time project now or are you working? oh yeah yeah this is all i do now uh i've made 600 youtube videos i've done 110 sh radio shows i've done 120 interviews uh, the book, the websites, the apps, none of, again, none of this is solicited. Everybody just kept coming to me and doing more stuff. And, uh, the offers from the producers, Hey, great, wonderful. As a matter of fact, it's weird that you called. Uh, I just had a documentary team up here, uh, spent the weekend with me and, uh, shot for three days. Cause they're going to be covering, they're going to try to talk to as many people before the conference as possible. And then they're going to attend the uh, yeah, the first first conference ever in the history of the United States and probably most of the rest of the world. Uh, it's going to be in North Carolina in the fall. And yeah, that's what I, that's what I do full time. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Go figure. And, and, and so you, you know, are, are in a sense retired and you made money from um, contracting in Boulder, you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I'm not that old. I mean, I'm only 49. But uh, what I started out playing. If, if have you been in Colorado long? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, good. Not not too long. Well, like, that's all right. I'll I'll throw some names at you. I mean, most of these companies are gone anyway. I was initially hired a way to play video games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. You know, most of the times if you're if you're going to do anything in the gaming industry, you're going to um, be in Southern California. And I won a, a little computer pinball tournament that was worldwide and they decided to hire me on as a ringer. And this company was actually out in Boulder. I had never been to Colorado before in my life. And so that was back in 95. And so I flew out during a snowstorm, thought I had landed somewhere in Anchorage and was convinced that I went to the wrong airport. Cause I actually, when I landed, that was, that was the last year I think that Stapleton was still open. And then they hired me and I went around and played, played games, went to E3 and Macworld Boston and Macworld San Francisco and did that sort of stuff. And then when they finally folded, their company was called, if you want the name of it, it was called Starplay, S-T-A-R 
P-L-A-Y. And then I was picked up by another company. They're gone now, too. It was called Unitime, U-N-I-T-I-M-E. And it's not a time travel company or anything like that. It's uh, they, <laughs> they tell <laughs> it's really spooky stuff. It's, it's like I went back to the 1800s. No, they uh, they dealt with time and attendance software, so they tracked time and attendance for blue collar companies. So I got to travel all around the country, and was really kind of led into this where I I found one of my niches, which was because time and attendance software is is brutally boring and not easy to understand. And I trained people on proprietary software basically for the next, oh no, 15 years. They'd go around and, and doing that. And then after that, uh, and I, I did it for two companies there. One was Unitime, one was called Time Center. And then there was another startup company that was happening. I kind of jumped around a little bit because I had some friends. Boulder was still, you know, at the time, a great, great place to do startup companies. And while I was doing that, I was uh, that's when I got into the conspiracy stuff. And uh, I mean, I'd always been into it, but I, you know, once YouTube got went full steam, you know, that's that's where a lot of this lives, and that's where I, you know, went down a few rabbit holes. And well, the rest is most of it. I think you know at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was going to ask, you know, why make YouTube videos versus anything else on the internet or write books or you know whatever. um because instant gratification people want uh, the reason why youtube is is destroying television to be honest uh the patience level you know we're talking about kids that you know live in their entire no offense to you but because i don't know how old you are <laughs> but live their entire existences via text i mean there's entire relationships now from cradle to grave that happen on a smartphone over text and YouTube is just part of that, you know, where you could instead, yeah, fine, you don't want to watch, people don't even, what's the joke from The Simpsons? It's like, why can't this microwave popcorn cook faster? That's kind of what this is, where even a half hour television show, a lot of people don't have patience for, but they will watch a five minute, a 10 minute, a 15 minute YouTube video. And that is, I mean, the, the YouTube content for this was the perfect vessel because it just it's easy to do you can put it up you know very very quickly and yeah you might have to deal with some copyright stuff here and there but it's instantaneous you can you can sort through it and you can you can get a massive audience quickly if you make some good stuff if if, if it resonates with people and that's what seemed to happen here because of the software training i had i took a concept it, look i didn't invent flat earth nobody did flat earth's been around for a long 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 time but mm -hmm. what happened was i took there was some new it was like a newer wave of flat earth that was out there but it was coming in like a fuzzy radio station and i said okay i just literally just walked up to it and radio and just took a quarter turn to the right and the station comes in that's all i really did i kind of created the dummies guide for flat earth i boiled it down without any math uh with not a ton of history and a lot of connecting the dots which is pretty easy for people to understand. Use some visuals, some some nothing that was hard to, to dig into. If you wanted the references, literally, you could just type it in the internet. Now, this is secret information. The big thing I did was I said, look, there was a lot of events that happened from the 1950s until now, which if you look, if you, if you can get up high enough to get the 50,000 foot view of it, really points towards the same thing, which is you know the 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 ultimate secret the the truman show secret or whatever building you want to call it that we are in a giant structure and everybody fell for it it's and one of your questions because i'm sure you have a lot and there's no way it, look if you're not a believer or you're neutral there's no way i can convince you in a single phone call but what i try to tell people is is that this thing was so because you're going to say well this everyone would have to be in on it every nasa employee and every pilot and every scientist i'm going no 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 this thing's so big that nobody knew uh which is why if you watched any of the clues that i did i said look when you keep scaling this the truman show obviously everybody had to be in on it except for truman although you could have used probably 10 or 20 people and but that's a whole nother show but if you keep scaling it up making it 100 miles wide a thousand miles wide ten thousand miles wide as you get bigger you can put more people in it and to the point where if you create like a negative reinforcement barrier on the outside namely antarctica you could pretty much fool everybody and and if as generations pass which is why i use films like the m night Shyamalan's the village is a perfect example if you can get past a certain number of generations everybody just takes it for granted you know we we accept the world that is presented to us 
and that's what really uh, resonated with me as I'm making as I was making this because again a combination of me doing software training and being you know a lifelong gamer I re I was starting to do this kind of like a simulation where I was it started out as a thought experiment it's like okay let's say I was the powers that be let's say I was some advanced alien race or whatever you want to call it you know how would I hide the world from the people that was inside it. it's kind of like if you had a, a terrarium with a lizard in it how would you keep you know the terrarium of course knows it's in some sort of cage they just don't care because it's they're they're lizards but if they were sentient how could you keep them from figuring out where they were and as i dug into it more and more i realized it's like yeah that, that's exactly what i would do oh yeah that's what i would do too and to the point i was going holy smokes this whole place is is one giant if, lack of a better word an ant farm and it's it's brilliant i mean the design you got to respect the design but anyway as i was putting those clues out there it really resonated with a lot of people and now the statistics again i don't know how you found it <laughs> but the statistics <laughs> out on the internet are ridiculously huge uh it's to the point where i think 90 percent of the flat earth community is in the closet because they don't they don't know who to talk to about it you know it's not like we've got stickers in the back of the car or you know bat you know little buttons we wear so uh which is why you know, the social events and the conference thing was inevitable in fact i just got invited to a um a conference they're going to do their first flat earth conference in london next march i believe and i'm one of only two americans that's going to be invited to that one so cool yeah what else can I overwhelm you with? Wait, can I, no, do you, no, if, I you don't, if you don't mind me asking, how did you, how did you stumble across this? Yeah, so um, I'd actually come across her videos a number of weeks ago when a friend sent them over. Um, <laughs> and I had read about the meetup in Fort Collins, which was, I think, last week, maybe two weeks ago. Right. They've been doing that uh, for a while now. Yeah, and I, I hadn't been there, but I'd heard about it, and I want to cover it i want to be there and talk to them and see what they're talking about oh sure um and uh and so that's how i, I reached out to you to to oh yeah you're a ringleader and you know you're connected to the community <laughs> ringleader i've never been called that before <laughs> that's that's good that's like what nefarious you know, no i it but yeah what what you're talking about there the colorado meetup that's just one of a bunch uh they've been happening since spring of last year the one the, the first meetups happened one was in seattle one was in houston and then there was a few in canada and florida and, and there's one in new I'm, i've been putting out promos one for new york and stuff and what i found is is that people the reason why people go to these things is because they're too nervous it's one of the rules we have which is you don't like the fight club thing and the first rule of flat club is you, <laughs> is you don't talk about flat club you don't do it because you don't know how, what the reaction is going to be and to be honest it, it's not that hard look if you're if your father or mother or whatever it is if they're if they do not believe in conspiracies you know if jfk was a lone gunman and 9 11 all that stuff if they don't believe in conspiracies at all don't bring it up to them it's it's not going to do any good uh but because of that there's a lot of people out there that just really want to be with other people and so the ones that i've gone to and i've gone to what, three so far we ha but i've heard the reports from the others it's all the same thing it's just you get in there and it's such a feeling of relief to be in a room i hate to say this because i've never been to one myself but they keep keep feeling like like um like aa meetings that i see on television <laughs> where people is like uh, hello my name is steve hey steve <laughs> I'm a flat earther, <laughs> you know, that's really kind of how it goes. And people tell their stories about how they got into it and, and how uh, they've, you know, they're now they question everything. That's one of the t-shirts, you know, question everything. It's, it's, uh, it's different than other conspiracies. People, you know, compare it to like other, I'm not going to go into conspiracies because I don't care about them anymore. This one is the only one that has a potentially happy ending which is kind of fun. You know, if, you know, Truman, Truman found out eventually he left, but I, you know, it can go the other way too. You know, people, if you've watched the movie, you know, what if it wasn't Truman? What if it was a different guy that was in that boat? Like the mayor, somebody had a lot more to lose. Once he got out there, would he still walk out? Cause Truman had nothing to lose. You know, his wife was fake. His friends were fake. He realized the whole thing was fake. But if you were in the position of power, you would probably hold on to it, which is, another one of your follow-up questions why would you why would you keep this thing a secret and that's because the potential upheaval of society in general would be massive I mean, 
academically all your university physical science programs would have to be rewritten from the ground up and some wouldn't even survive um uh, economically you'd have to shut down the entire stock market for at least a month to at least get the world economies to adjust to whatever potentially might happen and then the others you know the the big spiritual question because remember eight out of every ten people in the world belong to some sort of religion what how would they react to this you know are they going to immediately think oh yeah by the way there's the handprint of god over there and if they do what happens then uh, what happens to science and it's it's fascinating i mean it's for, as far as a thought experiment goes people get wrapped up in this for a long time the uh, the average person that goes down this rabbit hole or what i call kind of like a tunnel they they go in and they don't sleep for a couple of weeks and they just keep watching and watching and watching and watching and then finally they uh, they come out the other side either <laughs> either happy or really upset about it and uh luckily most of the most of the stuff so far has been positive anyway i ramble you gotta remember i talked about this a <laughs> lot no 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 it's good um i'm yeah you, you sort of touched on this but mm -hmm. just to put it a little bit more explicitly i'm curious you know why do you think people should care um you know let's say everyone agrees that the earth is is this circular disc you know what what does it change what does it matter for most people on a day-to-day -day basis it, it cares it, you care because of this and and it, have you did you watch any of the clues that i that i did the send you actually any of the clues yeah yeah, yeah. kind of okay well think of it like this we care because human beings are different i don't want to steal from the matrix here uh, but it was a great quote by Mr. Smith or Agent Smith in the beginning where he said that all life forms on this world develop a nat natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but human beings do not. And I take that a step further in that human beings, you could put a buffalo you know, in Colorado, you could put a buffalo in a thousand acre wildlife preserve and you know show him the fence and he's not going to care. He's just going to turn around from the fence and go, oh, look, some grass, water, trees, I'm perfectly happy. You put the same person, I mean, it could be just a few people in that same thousand acre wildlife preserve. All they're going to care about is the fence. That's all they're going to they're, they're going to think about because it goes into that higher power thing. It's like, you know, intelligent design. Okay, who built the fence? Why are we inside the fence? What's on the other side of the fence? Did we anger the fence makers in some way? Maybe we should sacrifice something to the fence. And, you know, it goes on from there. So part of the reason why we should care is that again because every well, probably one out of every 10 emails i get circle around this question it's like well you know i'm still gonna have to go to my crappy job tomorrow even if this was you know, <laughs> if it was flat my wife doesn't hates me and my kids don't listen to me blah 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 it's like yeah but that's all anyone's ever going to talk about. I mean, yeah, you can find, you can say you're going to go to work and, and nothing's going to change, but that's not true. The mainstream, mainstream media, that's all they would talk about for years. Uh, the church that you go to, that's all the sermons would revolve around. Um, the you know, Your factory or wherever you work may not even exist anymore, or it may have to re-gear to something else because you're talking about an entirely different paradigm for the world that we know. But if, not to mention the the scientific implications again the uh what what happens to sci scientific credibility and i'm not picking on science but scientific credibility would have a real tough time because okay you know, you, you're talking about an institution that was built on this model for 500 years minimum and I know some people say well no it goes back to the greeks and it's like thousands i'm going look let's go back to what most people can agree on that's copernicus 500 years at least i don't care if it's 2000 years doesn't matter the point is, is that the institution that we all science is based on is at least 500 years old. Everything is is the the globe is the foundation. If that globe then comes into question, so many things have to be redone, and that's a lot of work. So if you're wondering why, you know, how that meeting goes, if you're an X Files fan, you know, with the smoking man sitting at a big table full of sinister white guys, you know, what happens to that mean? How long is that meeting? That means about 10 minutes long. Because they say, oh, what's the worst that can happen? It's like, oh, I don't know, economic chaos, academic destitution, uh, a, a spiritual, uh, I, I don't even want to call it awakening. It would be a potential spiritual backlash is what it would be. So people should care because it changes. How, how should I put this? I'm trying to come up with a good, 
a good sound bite for you. <laughs> the they should care because the world, everything about your world then changes. You your my yeah your attitude may not change, but everything in the world around you, literally everything, will change in in almost no time at all. And some people can't deal with it. It's the it's part of it's the neo reference. I had a guy call me on a radio show. It was a call in show. It wasn't even my show. And he, he asked me how old I was. And when he found out I was younger than him, he goes, well, I mean, I'm 60 something years old. And my, he goes, my father worked for NASA. He goes, how dare you? How dare you young man? Tell me the world isn't what I think it is. And it was interesting because in, in some ways he was right. This is the only conspiracy you can't walk away from. You don't want to look at 9-11, you know, fine. You don't want to look at JFK or Pearl Harbor or any of the American wars or any of that stuff. That's fine. There are some secrets that can be buried in the desert that you'll never have to worry about. We know this. But this one, this, is, this has been around you the entire time. It's kind of like falling for a street magic trick and being suckered in for the entire time. And then, you know, you know if you've ever done a street, followed a street magician, and he, then he finally sets you up for the big finale, right? And he, and, and you're ready. He's like, no, you can't fool me this last time. It's not going to happen. Well, the thing was you were already fooled. So I try to tell people, I go, don't feel bad about being fooled by this because this you were born into this. this. This not only fooled you, the reason why no one ever questioned it is because this goes back so many generations. This goes back 20 plus generations. So it was your father and his father, basically farther than you can even f track your family tree, probably. So by the time you got here, no, you didn't have a chance. Yeah, you, you're in a classroom with your globe and, and your parents and your grandparents. There's nobody alive, nobody even remotely close to being alive that has ever questioned this in 500 years. So that's why everybody bought it. It's the, um, it's the Ringling Brothers, uh, you know, P.T. Barnum. He had a great quote. You know it, which is, you know, you can fool um, some of the people all the time and all of the people mm -hmm. some of the time. And that's really what this is. This was never going to be forever. The technology is ca has finally caught up. And now we've got, you know, between social media and camera technology and uh, high speed Internet, there's there's no chance. Um, it's kind of like they, they could move pieces around and try to dodge for as long as they could. And, you know, 60 years. That's pretty good, but it's kind of like um, hiding a pack of cigarettes from your roommates, you know, inside your apartment. You can move it around here and there, but sooner or later, the odds say that they're going to bump into it. And that's what's happened really since the beginning of 2015. It's uh, now, now we're just, you know, and the mainstream media, you know, once the, I forget about, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson doing that thing with B.O.B., the Kyrie Irving thing was monstrous. When, when he came out, you know, during the All-Star break, that was that was huge. I mean, I'm watching SportsCenter and talk about it or surreal moments like watching Jimmy Kimmel and Dave Chappelle. I don't I, talk about Kyrie Irving and I was reading about it in Rolling Stone. That was amazing. And I knew it was going to, you know, die down a little bit again because, you know, it's it's not quite quite mainstream ready yet, but it's close. So yeah, I'm curious how many people you would estimate believe this, you know, in, in Colorado and also nationally. Um, hard to say Colorado. I, you'd have to break it down for the, um, uh, the population of Colorado. But percentage-wise, in fact, I could probably send you an article when I'm done. There was a guy that went on a plane recently up in Seattle with a spirit level. And in the middle of that article, and I can't remember who the article, but I'll, I'll send it to you. They did a little poll, which says, has this article convinced you that the earth was flat? And there were three choices. One was yes, one was no, and one was duh, I already knew. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the, the yes was at about 10%. But what was interesting was the duh part was about another 14, 15%. So, and you got to remember, you know, we'll, we'll round down for every 1% just in the United States. That's 3 million people. So there are a lot of people. And, well, and I'll give you some, some hard numbers here. And if you, again, if you want, I can, I can send these to you. When I did, before I did the clues back in 2015, if you typed in flat earth into YouTube, you would maybe get 50,000 search results. And that doesn't mean it's necessarily 50,000 videos. It just means that there's 50,000 relative search results tied to it in some way. But right. if, you if you type it in right now and sort by upload date, 
because that gives you the, the most recent numbers. It's coming in this morning at about 17.4 million. That's a, what is that, 30,000 plus percent increase. It's ridiculous. And to the point where now, uh, what I've seen, I mean, every once in a while you'll see some variations, but for the most part, if you go into any browser, whether it's a phone or a PC or whatever, and you type in the earth is, tell me what the first thing that shows up there. Because that's just a side effect of of what we're doing it's uh there's the numbers are massive and you're saying okay but the number i threw out 17.4 million you're going well what does that mean okay okay we'll type in lady gaga she comes in at about 16. uh typing donald trump probably going to go down as the most controversial president ever he comes in at 19. so we're sandwiched in between those two and we don't have any marketing money <laughs> We did that <laughs> with a grassroots movement. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't even come in at a million. Uh, Katy Perry comes in at like 20 or 30. I mean, the only people, the only mainstream topics that are crushing us right now are uh, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, <laughs> and, and probably others that you know. I mean, we beat most television shows, most movies. Uh, I think all of the Beatles. NASA comes in at like 5 million. And we're coming in at 17. We're tripling NASA. Every every mention of NASA in, in YouTube. Uh, it's it's incredible. And the reason is um, because of the fans, you know, the, the, the community. Because they're just ravenous. They When you get involved, it's not like a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of people sit on the sidelines. But a lot of people get so pumped up about it. They just start making videos. It's like, first time. I mean, people that have never had a YouTube channel before will just come in and just start cranking out. It's like, here's my flat earth journey and here's why. And, you know, that it'd be horrible, you know, no editing. And But I mean, first timers, you know, rookies, great. But you get enough of those people on the numbers. You know, now when you type in again, you type in flat earth and YouTube, the wall of content is so huge. I don't even find my videos to like the fifth or sixth page now. And yet, you know, still doing the conference and everything. But yeah, the community is, is massive. And I'll send you, I will send you the, uh, the link to that uh, stat, which is, which is interesting. It's, uh, uh, you might be able to contact them and figure out the exact numbers, but uh, great stuff. Great experiments happening out there. We're just accosting science on a regular basis. Uh, our two main enemies, uh, the, the public enemy number one has got to be Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, which is unfortunate because he doesn't do debates. So, and mainstream science runs for the most part. We've we've emailed or FedExed with regular mail most of your high level physicists, astro astrophysicists, and astronomers in both the United States and the UK, trying to trying to bait them, trying to get them into this thing. And most of the time, they won't do it because there's too many questions that can't be answered by just mathematics, and they wouldn't be dumb enough to try it. Mm. Sorry, rambling again. What? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm learning a lot. That's right. But by the um, way, I'm, I was, I was recording this just for posterity's sake. Did, did I can send you a copy of this if you're taking notes too quickly? Oh, um, I mean, sure, that would be helpful. Um, okay. There's, you know, no pressure there. Okay. No, no, no. That's um, fine. I mean, I, I think it'll take. I usually I usually do that because every once in a while I had people that said because I can hear them typing or whatever and they and I say I go, you don't have to type as fast I can record it for you and they, oh yeah that'd be great oh yeah cool no that would be helpful um, thank you cool um, I'm, I'm wondering if you know you can put me in touch with any of the um, I can put you in touch with any Colorado of the Colorado community yeah the Colorado community in particular and, and that that Fort Collins group oh I can I can do I can do one better the okay well the guy you want to talk to so and you don't need to um, you don't need me for this part anyway the phone number for him is literally at the end of the video the uh, the meetup it's at the end of every meetup video it's in there but I can send it to you as well in email is if that, you want um, John I think John Vanuck yeah okay excellent. yeah yeah I and you can and that. you can mention that you talked to me and if you want what i can try to do can't make any promises because it's eh, it's friday maybe maybe here you, you lucked out colorado there's two out of the what is it 11 speakers that are going to be at the conference are actually in colorado two, both of them are in denver one of them his name he runs a channel called globebusters i'll send you the link for that and his name is bob nodell he's great and he and his wife, Cammy, are, are outstanding. And then there's another one runs a channel called ODD Reality. And I'll send you the link to that one, too. And he runs a channel. I'm sorry. His name is Mike Jack. 
Although Great. I don't think I don't think that's his real name. He's he goes he had several. A lot of people again still use aliases and avatars, but mine is actually my channel name is Mark Sargent and my name is Mark Sargent. So, but yeah, I'd happy happy to put you in touch with just about anybody you can think of. I've I've been doing this long enough that I'm in contact with pre almost everybody. Awesome. No, that would be extremely helpful. Yeah. Um, thank you. No, no worries at all. Well, that about does it on questions on my end right now. Um, okay. It's cool. I'll, I'll send you emails or, or call again if there are more questions or follow up or anything. That oh, happen. yeah. Yeah. And again, it's it, regardless how you paint this, don't worry about it because so many people get people will lash out at this thing. And we've had a bunch of <laughs> the, the average response is. Uh, is hostile, but we that's okay. The the line I try to, to to tell people is, if you don't laugh at this right away, if your first impression isn't laughter, then there's probably something wrong with you, because that's what everybody does. Everyone goes, this is stupid. I've literally, I'm not kidding you. I've literally had hardcore conspiracy guys, hardcore conspiracy guys that believe in you know reptilian shapeshifter royalty members, that that I say, oh yeah, what about this flat Earth thing? Right? And they go, get out of here. They will literally laugh me out of the room. I'm going, holy smokes. So, you have, you'll have fun um, with it. So, any anything else I can do for you? No, that would be great. Um, yeah, the the names in Denver um, would be excellent. I will, uh, I'll talk to, to John soon the, uh, about the Fort Collins stuff. Right. But I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. No worries. I will shoot you an email. I'll compile that stuff and shoot it to you. And uh, because the, let's see, how big is this Skype thing? The audio recording will be about 35 megs, so I'll probably send that to you through WeTransfer, so you get a separate email on that. Great. Terrific. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you too, Mark. Have a great one. All right. Bye-bye.